So let's talk about finding the volume of a rectangular prism. And let's start with sketching one in real quick. So um, you can kind of follow along here. But rectangular prism means we're going to start with a rectangle here. So I'll draw with a straight line. I'll come in here and draw my rectangle. And a rectangle normally that'd be a two-dimensional rectangle, which means it's flat, like on a piece of paper. But rectangular prism is three-dimensional. It actually has um, a length, width, and a height to it. So those three dimensions. So we're going to draw this then as a three-dimensional shape. Um, can straighten that out a little bit. Come in there. And essentially I'm going to end up with this three-dimensional shape, kind of like a box. Um, not really a cube because it's not exactly a square, but close. And I have my um, rectangular prism. So when we solve for the volume, we're talking about um, if we filled this thing up, if this was an aquarium um, and we filled it with water all the way into the inside, how much water could it hold? If it was a box and we filled it with sand, how much sand could it hold? Volume is how much a three-dimensional object can basically hold. So we need a formula for that. So when we have the formula for volume, what we really look at the basic way is that we're going to multiply the length of the uh, prism times the width and then times the height. So we actually need some measurements then if we're going to do that. This is kind of our basic formula. So let's say we had a length of 6 here. Let's say our width was, uh, let's go with 4. And let's say our height was also 4. So this is how high this box is. So if I multiply all these together, I should be able to determine how much this box can hold. And I would suggest just kind of filling in right over here and then doing the multiplication. So the length is 6 times the width is 4 times the height, which is 4. Well, um, some quick math here. 6 times 4, just do 2 at a time to pick four, uh, two of these. 6 times 4 is 24. Then you would multiply that times 4, and we need to do 24 times 4. Make sure you're thorough. 4 times 4 is 16. I carry the 1. Eight times, uh, 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 is 9. So the answer should be equals 96. And when you write volume, you're going to write the units cubed. So I didn't put this at the beginning, but let's say this was in inches, and this was in inches, and this was in inches. Well, my answer is going to be in inches cubed because I multiplied three of these um, dimensions, my 3D dimensions, three dimensions here would be cubed. Area is squared, but that would be um, inches cubed. So multiplying the length times the width times the height. Now, real quick, one other way you might see this formula um, shown, and I'm going to make a little space here, is, um, is if you look at a formula chart, sometimes you will see that volume will equal, um, and they'll put a big B for base, and then they'll put height. So they'll show B times H, base times height. And that confuses students because they think it just means, oh, I just multiply the, the base times the height and I'll get my answer, which is not true. A big B in the formula means that the length and the width have already been multiplied together. So you've already figured out the base area. You've done 6 times 4, and that'd be 24. And then you multiply it by the height, which would be times 4, and you'd still get 96. So regardless of how you see this, really you just want to multiply the length times the width times the height. But you might see this formula on a formula chart and I don't want it to throw you off. The big B means you multiply the base already and then multiply by the height. Let's try another example here. I've already got this one sketched in. And let's put some, some uh, measurements. Let's go three centimeters here. Let's do centimeters this time. I can write that a little bit neater, but let's say this is three centimeters. Let's say my width is two and a half. Let's throw some mixed numbers in here. And let's say I have one and one fourth. Okay. Now we already know our volume formula, the one we're going to use, is going to be the length times the width times the height. Or, of course, it could be volume equals the big B times H. Either one. All right. So let's fill in our numbers then. That means that three times one and uh, two and a half, excuse me, times one and one fourth should get me this answer. Now if you want to keep these at fractions, you could definitely multiply these fractions and get the answer. 
Um, I'm going to convert these into decimals and multiply. So I'm going to do this part real quick right here. I'm going to do three times two and a half first. And I know just off the top of my head, two and a half um, is 2.5 as a decimal. And then I'm going to multiply that by three. So 2.5 times three. Um, I'm going to move my decimal over here. 3 times 5 is 15. I'm going to carry the 1. 3 times 2 is 6. Plus 1 is 7. It's not 75 because I need to bring that decimal back there. And I would get 7.5. So at this part, I did that and I did that. I have 7.5. And now I want to multiply that times the height, which is actually 1 and 1 fourth. And again, I want to make some space. I'm going to go in and I'm going to multiply and turn that into 1 and 1 fourth into a decimal. Okay, so 1 and 1 fourth as a decimal should be 1.25. And if I do 1.25 times 7.5, I should be able to get my answer. I probably still need some room here. This is, again, 7.5 times um, 1.25. So let's do some multiplication here. Uh, I'm going to move my decimals here, that is two spaces, here one space. 5 times 5 is 25, carry the 2. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12, carry the 1. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 is 6. 0 from my holder right over there. Um, 7 times 5 is 35, so I put a 5. I'm going to carry a 3. Um, 7 times 2 is 14, 15, 16, 17, if I add that um, 3, and then uh, carry the 1, and then finally 7 times 1 is 7, plus 1 is 8. So I get 5 if I add this up, I get 7, 7 and 6 is 13, carry the 1, and I get 9,375. 9, but I know what I really need to do is come back in here and move this over 1, 2, 3, places to get 9 and 375 thousandths right over there, which I think is 3 eighths, 9 and 3 eighths if we have this as a fraction. Um, that would be my answer for the volume. And again, let me go ahead and put my units up. Don't forget to put your units like I just did. This would be centimeters cubed, three-dimensional, because I've gone in and multiplied that times that times that. Uh, one more example here, and I'm gonna, we'll put it in, and then I'm going to urge you to pause it, try to work ahead, unpause it, see how you do. But let's sketch in real quick a rectangular prism. So let's go with my rectangle here, kind of fast sketch one. Um, here, there we go, there we go. Uh, make this one slightly deeper, I think. And um, giving this some measurements, I can do that a little better, there it is. Um, I'm going to go with 3 here, so let's do 3, let's do 1 and 1 half, and let's do 4. Now remember, the volume is going to be your length times width times height, or the big B times H, and the big B of course means you multiply the length times the width, and you get that. So um, go ahead and try to solve this, then unpause it and see how you did. You can turn this into a decimal if you want or you could do it as a fraction, whatever you would prefer. Go ahead. So I would uh, keep it, I would turn this into a decimal, so volume equals length times width times height, which is 3 times 1 and a half times 4. So um, as I turn this into a decimal, this is really going to be volume equals 3 times 1.5 times 4. Now, I can actually multiply these in any order. I don't need to do anything different with this. So what I might do real quick is multiply 3 times 4, just because I know it mentally off the top of my head, and volume will equal 3 times 4 is 12 times 1.5. And some of y'all might be able to do 12 times 1.5 in your head. Um, but if not, we multiply 12 times 1.5. And i got to move the decimal one place there. And then 5 times 2 is 10. Carry the 1. 5 times 1 is 5. Plus 1 is 6. Let's go ahead and put the 0 there. 1 times 2 is 2. And then 1 times 1 is 1. So I think I get 0. 6 plus 2 is 8. Bring my 1. My decimal is there. 
but I better bring it back one place and make that 18 and um, let's do feet I forgot to put units but let's make it feet sorry feet and we're gonna do 18 feet cubed three-dimensional cube has three dimensions to it and we multiply that one times that one times that one so that would be the volume of this rectangular prism